Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics, and today we are going to be setting up a quarantine tank. So what is a quarantine tank? Do you need it for just salt water? Do you need it for fresh water as well? Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the purpose behind it, what our goals are for it, and how I'm going to be doing it today. Um, so a quarantine tank is meant to do just what it says. We're going to quarantine the fish, the invertebrates, maybe even the coral. Or I don't, I've never done it with freshwater plants, but I suppose you could do it. Um, before you put it in your main display, the reason being is that what you want to do... Oh, you're going to leave me now? Okay, I thought you were going to be here to be the co-pilot. All right, fine, don't. To prevent diseases, algae, bacteria, parasites, hitchhikers, really anything that can potentially cause a problem. Now, some systems, it may be better to do quarantine than others. In the case of my system, however, I will be setting up this quarantine tank for the direct purpose of salt water. Um, I'm doing this before the tank is completely set up because my current goal is to quarantine at least three to five weeks to check for various common saltwater parasites. For me, that's really a focus on ick. I mean, ick is both in freshwater and the marine side of it. Um, I personally have dealt with uh, freshwater ick before, and I find that from at least what I've researched, that saltwater ick or marine ick can be a much larger problem um, and danger to fish. So I'm definitely going to be a lot more cautious on that side, especially for how much effort and time I'm putting into this tank. God dang it, we're not putting anything bad inside this tank. So, what is my quarantine setup? Well, this quarantine setup is being set up with a saltwater tank in mind, my 250 gallon reef tank. Now, that hasn't been set up yet. As I said, I wanna start the quarantine early so at least I can get a couple fish in the system once the unit is completely set up. So let's talk about exactly the components that I'm putting into this quarantine tank. First, this is a 29 gallon Aquion tank. Um, I got it from a coworker completely free. It's free aquariums. Super excited about that. However, you can definitely get them at the uh, Petco uh, dollar per gallon sale. You can also get them on Craigslist if in your, you're in the United States or any other used uh, sale website in your own country. Now, it didn't come with it. I went ahead and got that separately since my coworker didn't have it. Was a uh, Versa Aquion lid. It's just glass. It prevents evaporation, which is really important in salt water, so we keep the salinity stable. Um, with this, I decided to. I had a few leftover pieces of, I believe this is three or four inch PVC, just to give the fish an opportunity to hide, feel a little bit more secure. And then there's some leftover PVC in the back from some of my plumbing on the 250 gallon saltwater tank. You're also going to want a form of filtration. Now, I'm trying not to give you guys too much of a sneak peek of my 250 gallon tank. These sponge filters have been completely cycled and cured. I can go ahead and toss these into the 29 and it would be instantly cycled. That being said, um, I'm trying not to show you the rest of the tank because that will be coming in a future video. So let's go ahead and install this into the tank as well as a few other ancillary items that we'll talk about here shortly. All right, so we've pulled out the double sponge filter from the saltwater tank and we've got our heater ready to go. This heater was used to heat up the water inside of the uh, rock curing bucket. So this is gonna be perfect for this 29 gallon tank. Let's go ahead and put these inside the quarantine system. All right, both the sponge filter and the heater have been set up. I went ahead and used my uh, Tetra Whisper pump. These things are awesome, especially if you're in a crowded area or a kind of a communal area and you want things to be quiet. Those things are amazingly quiet. So I've only filled it up about halfway so that we could keep the uh, sponge filter in, but let's go ahead and fill it up the rest of the way. Now, what I've got going, super simple. This location was pretty awesome. So this is kind of my, I have, since I moved in, we really haven't done anything with it, but this is supposed to be kind of our game room. We've got uh, our couch, carpet, my cat, 
um, a window and the TV. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put like game consoles on mounted boxes all along here. I'm super pumped about what we're gonna do, but the shelving situation, my homebrew, and other things really needs to be cleaned up. So let's ignore the uh, the crap behind the uh, the curtain. So let's go ahead and fill this up. Got our plumbing here. Follow the line, all my buckets for doing all my work, and bam, RODI water. So for those of you that are not familiar, RODI water is almost required in the saltwater hobby. Um, just because of the issues on phosphates and some other problems. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go and plug this in and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so this is my submersible pump. We are taking water from this bucket, trash can, I'm not even gonna call it a bucket, these are buckets, and it's coming directly into my tank. With that said, I think it's time for a tank fill time lapse. All right, guys, this is pretty much it in terms of what you have to do to set up a quarantine tank. We have filtration, we've got a heater, we have different items in the tank that uh, will prevent stress on the fish. Um, I know some people like to put sand, substrate, rocks inside their quarantine. I personally think that it's a bad idea because a lot of different parasites can get in that sand and substrate and stay in there for the future. So I personally try to avoid it. These are super easy to take out and clean. Now, just because we have set up the quarantine tank it does not mean that we're completely done. Now, when you get your fish or your coral and you put them inside your quarantine tank, a big part of it is proactive treatment. Some people don't like to treat unless they see the signs of something, which is perfectly fine. You know, you do you. But uh, in my case, every single time a fish comes into my system, when they go through quarantine, they're going to be treated with cupramine. This is a buffered active uh, copper that was produ that's produced by sea chem. Basically, the goal of this is to kill certain um, certain parasites like ick before they have a chance to develop inside the tank. <laughs> So I'll be treating this every single time we get a new fish into the system. Um, there are other types of medications. Now they're not all here yet because they are still in the mail, but like Prozipro, different way to treat certain parasites. Um, I do have Bayer Complete. Um, this is kind of, you know this is actually meant for more lawn care um, and home use. It's made by Bayer Advanced. Uh, you have to use the correct measurements and everything else, but this is how you can dip coral. Um, to make sure that certain bugs, parasites, all that kind of stuff, hitchhikers, are killed before they go into your system. Through the magic of YouTube, we are one day later. This is right after I got back from FJW Aquariums. I went ahead and picked up two clownfish. These are some of the first peaceful fish that I'll be introducing into my system. I purchased a Wyoming white clownfish as well as a snowflake clown. And actually, my girlfriend was super excited about buying a clownfish, so I went ahead and let her pick the uh, snowflake clown, the one that looks like more of a traditional clownfish. Right now, they are both temp acclimating. We're gonna go ahead and let them sit here for 20 minutes. We'll come back shortly and we'll do some drip acclimation. So while I waited for them to temp acclimate, I went ahead and took the tops off of both of their fish bags. What I wanted to do is measure the salinity of the salt that came in from my fish store. Now the night before, I had already added salt to my quarantine tank. I had called the fish store and asked them, hey, what, uh, what's the salinity of the systems that you guys have your clownfish in? And they told me 1.022 or 1.023. Now after measuring it here, I found out that one of the bags, the ones that I'm, the one that I'm measuring right here in this part of the video, was 1.030, which is way off. That's super high, right? And then the other bag was 1.028, right? So my tank, I brought it to 1.023, um, but the night before, so I had a lot of work to do. I had to make sure that the tank had salt added to it a little bit closer to where these guys were. To speed up that process, I added two power heads that were way overrated for a 29 gallon tank, but they were able to mix the salt water much quicker than if I, uh, than if I didn't. Once the tank salinity was a little bit closer to where I wanted it, I started the drip acclimation. I got out my uh, trusty jerry-rigged piece of inline tubing, a tiny little pinwheel valve, and some duct tape, 
and I set this system up. Um, you guys can definitely go to Amazon, spend a couple bucks, and buy you know a, a little fancy pump thing. But I mean, you, if you've got any of the tools laying around, you can totally do this yourself. For this acclimation, I was aiming at one to two drops per second. This is a little bit slower than how I normally do it, but uh, I feel like saltwater fish are a little bit more sensitive to parameter swings than freshwater fish, um, and so I wanted to take it a little bit slower. My goal at the end was to have about three times water volume inside my container from when I started. This process ended up taking, oh my God, probably two hours. My, my girlfriend was bugging me the entire time. It's like, hey, when are we going to go get dinner? And I'm like, I'm not getting dinner until these fish are in this tank. During the acclimation process, one thing that I saw was a little bit of aggression. And when I say a little bit, a lot of aggression from the Wyoming white to the snowflake clown. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with clownfish, there's something that happens when you put two clownfish together. They will fight. They will fight until one of them submits. Um, usually, in this case, it's going to be the bigger one against the smaller one. Um, what ends up happening is both of these clownfish are male to begin with. Once one of them dominates the other, the dominant clownfish will become a female. That's kind of how this system works. So after about two hours, I went ahead and put the fish into the system. Man, I cannot tell you how excited, how nervous, how scared I am about this whole process. Um, you know, I mean, I take keeping fish and my plants very seriously. So if there's a problem, you know, I, I, get, in, I get involved. I get personally involved. Maybe I shouldn't do that, but I feel like I, I, translate, I translate my empathy into kind of a solid work habit when it comes to these fish. But man, these guys are awesome. Just so you guys know, these two are considered designer clownfish. Um, some of them do have the possibility of spawning in the wild, but others do not. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, these were the two that were available at my local fish store. They're absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for how to set up a quarantine tank. Now, I have some other plans with this quarantine tank based on some of the fish that are that I'm going to be have coming in. Some of them will be able to get into the system early because I don't need those special requirements. One of them, however, that I'm going to be getting in will need a few things added to this and we'll go over that in the future. In terms of when I'm actually going to put fish in here, probably this weekend. Today I'm recording. It is uh, Wednesday. God, that took way too long. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Um, and so we will be uh, getting some fish hopefully this weekend and we'll put them in the quarantine tank. I'll give you an update on that. I'll see you soon. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. See you next time, guys.